Hey, Joe, welcome. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me today. How's it going? Yeah, it's going well. Thank you, Matt. Excited about this. Cool. So as a brief introduction, Joe is the author of Let's Write a Short Story and the founder of TheWritePractice.com, a writing blog and a community of authors who focus on daily writing practice. Uh, right. So today we're going to talk about Scrivener and the future of creative writing tools, but before we get into it, why don't you uh, break the ice, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background as an author. Sure. Yeah. So um, I've been writing creatively and professionally um, for, well, officially since 2011, but a lot longer than that. Um, and uh, I started the right practice in 2011, and uh, I wrote let's write a story like short story like you said, and I've ghostwritten three other books, and uh, all of them, but the very first book that I ghost wrote, I used Scrivener. So I'm really uh, passionate about the tool. It's a really effective tool for my own writing. Um, I use it almost daily, and uh, among other tools that maybe we'll get a chance to talk to, totally. talk about. Um, but yeah, I always recommend it to friends and I'm, I'm an advocate for its use. <laughs> totally. So uh, you said that you wrote, you used Scrivener to write all the books except the first one. So when did yeah. you find out about it? You started in 2011, so you probably found out about it like a year later? I So I wrote my first book in 2010 and, and okay. I didn't know about it, yeah. Um, as I was writing about it and I, and I was using Microsoft Word and mm -hmm. you know one thing about working on a, a big you know work file like a, a book it just becomes unmanageable yeah it's um, yeah and so I mean it takes like five minutes to load and um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah it's just a big pain so um, yeah, I, I discovered Scrivener on my second book, um, and it made everything so much easier. Can Can you describe that experience for us? The like the experience of discovering Scrivener for the first time. <sighs> yeah, that's a good good question. Um, you know, at first it's overwhelming because it is a program. It's a large program, mm -hmm. and it has a lot of capabilities, and it's totally different than Word. And, in a lot of different areas. In terms of formatting, it's not very robust yeah. um, where, where it is. Uh, and in terms of organization, it's like so much, you know, has so many more features and none of those features are in Word. So it's, it's really kind of confusing to get started. And I had to kind of figure out my own way to use it for my writing. Mm -hmm. Um, but I spent a lot of time kind of playing with stuff that, that wasn't very effective. It was kind of probably procrastinating uh, right. until I finally got into a place where I just, you know, used it for what I needed it for. Do you feel like you were resistant to it at first? Like you were like, oh, this is way too overwhelming. I don't, I don't really want to go there. Um, no, not, not me. I, I know other people, other writers that I coach, um, who have been very resistant to Scrivener, mm -hmm. um, especially when they first open it and they see everything. And it's really stressful. How much is there, you know? Yeah. Um, so, but personally, I was like really, really excited about it and uh, felt like it would be a huge um, motivator even mm -hmm. for my own writing, uh, just a chance to get to use this really cool tool. Cool. Um, so we can get and, into the details events. of Scrivener afterwards. Um, I'm just wondering, like, what was the difference between like the writing process before and and after you used it? Can you compare the two for us? Yeah. So I think you know before using Microsoft Word. I mean, when I was using Microsoft Word, I found myself um, just kind of putting everything into one document. And having, I mean, really having to write chronologically, mm -hmm. you know, because that's how Microsoft Word is. It works. It's you have to write from, from the top and go down. Mm -hmm. One of the nice things about Scrivener um, that I soon found really helpful is that I could jump around a lot easier mm -hmm. um, as kind of 
my writing led me and and just use it as a place for capture um, so I could you know free write about whatever I wanted to write about that day and uh, you know put it in a folder and I knew that folder was eventually going to be a chapter you know um, it, did, it, it allowed me to be uh, more spontaneous and creative, really, um, because I had more flexibility. That's something that I hear a lot. That you know, Microsoft Word is is a very strict linear format because you don't really have another choice. Where people who use use Scrivener, they start writing out of order, which is actually more natural. Do you find that naturally you write out of order? Um, sometimes, yeah. I mean, for my creative writing, I definitely do. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm writing on a nonfiction book for a client, I tend to go more in order. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but so much of my nonfiction writing is less like composing and, and more just organizing and getting, getting stuff into the right structure and mm -hmm. outlining and, and making, you know, I ghostwrite. So, um, a lot of my, a lot of the writing comes either directly from the client or it's the client's ideas that I've transcribed. And right. so uh, mostly what I do is I organize and I rewrite. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, and Scrivener makes that just so much easier. <laughs> totally. So you mentioned there that you write both fiction and nonfiction. Um, one of the things I was wondering was what's the difference um, in your process using Scrivener between the two? You said, um, I mean, you kind of covered this a little bit, you know, that yeah. uh, nonfiction was a little bit more linear, more about organizing and structure, and creative writing was uh, a little bit more spontaneous. But could you go yeah. into a little bit more detail about the difference? Sure. So I think with, with Scrivener, um, with my creative writing, like I said, it's about capture. Mm -hmm. So if I have kind of a seed of an idea, um, you know, I'm taking a shower and something occurs to me and, uh, and I remember it by the time I get out of the shower and write it down, I can just put it into a document in Scrivener mm -hmm. um, in its own little file. Uh, if I'm, you know, in the morning and I'm just wanting to do some, some quick writing or free writing uh, and working on that, I can just throw it into a document on Scrivener. Mm -hmm. you know? Whereas, uh, so it's, it's really focused on capture um, because I know I can organize it later and I do. And so I'll go back and I'll reread and I can rewrite from there and I can, you know, kind of slowly mold a book. Um, for my nonfiction, for my uh, ghostwriting specifically, um, you know, then it's more... I already have most of the content by the time it's in Scrivener. Right. Um, or, you know, I'll be, um, I'll be storing interview questions for my client or, um, you know, ideas I have or holes that need to be filled. Um, and so I do do some composing in Scrivener and I'm working on new things, but most of it's focused on editing and organizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is one thing it really excels at. Yeah. Um, so, since we're on the topic of editing, um, do you have a process for, for Scrivener that you use with editors? Um, I mean, for myself, I mean, one thing that I have trouble with uh, with Scrivener is that all the editors I work with want uh, a Microsoft Word formatted document because of that robust yeah. track changes feature, something that Scrivener right. kind of lacks. And so what I find myself doing is I'll export it to uh, from Scrivener over to Word, they'll track changes, and then I have to go through and manually put it back into Scrivener. Um, you know, I've figured out that if you copy paste um, from Microsoft Word to Scrivener, it'll take the comments, but you don't get the track changes features. Like if they switched uh, the structure of a sentence and you just copy pasted the final version over to Scrivener, you kind of miss that lesson, you know? So do you have a specific um, process you use to work with editors? Yeah, I think your process is about my what I what I do too. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I wish it were more seamless. Um, but usually, when you're working with clients or editors, they don't have Scrivener, mm -hmm. and if they did, 
they probably would edit even even then they'd probably edit through word right um, because for editing word is easier so um you know usually i will fo use scrivener for composing a first and maybe second draft mm -hmm. um and then for editing, I often switch to Microsoft Word permanently. Oh, interesting. Um, sometimes, if I'm if I know it's going to be like an ebook, mm -hmm. and I want to use um, Scrivener's export features, um, I'll put it back into Scrivener. Um, but I don't always do that. <laughs> so, if you don't take it back to Scrivener, do you compile an ebook from Microsoft Word? Sometimes, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. I've done that. Yeah. I mean, it's, Word, Word is actually pretty effective at, um, at turning something into an ebook. And it takes a little bit of messing with, but, um, right. you know, I've done it for several different books. So sure. I know the process. Uh, probably Scrivener is a little bit easier in some areas and a yeah. little bit harder in others. Oh, that's interesting. What uh, what areas is it more difficult to use Scrivener in as opposed to Microsoft Word? Um, so specifically, you know, when I'm exporting a book, what I want to do is create a PDF mm -hmm. and an, an EPUB file. Right. So when I'm when I'm making a PDF. Microsoft Word is excels. Mm -hmm. It beats Scrivener because it has more formatting options. Right. Yeah. Um, you can make a book actually look like a book easier. Um, so, in that sense, Microsoft Word is is simpler. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of think about it like a WYSIWYG editor, if you're familiar with the term. You know, yeah. the, the what you see is what you get uh, in Microsoft Word because they, they have all this formatting hidden behind the scenes. You know, like Microsoft Word software actually uses HTML to format the page, and that's what translates to a PDF, whereas uh -huh. Scrivener is kind of format agnostic, and that's the whole point of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Definitely. So when I... I, I lost the question, but... <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah... From, for uh, ebooks, for ePubs, um, Word is is a little bit more difficult mm -hmm. than Scrivener. Um, you have to export as an HTML file rather than going straight to Kindle or right. straight to ePub. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, sometimes you have to do a little bit of messing with the HTML, CSS in there because right. Word is, their formatting is a mess in <laughs> HTML. Mm -hmm. um, so I end up having to do some kind of playing with that. Um, you know, I've learned how to do it, but it's definitely a hack. Totally, totally. And for somebody, um, like I don't think most authors are are also coders, right? right? You know, it's something that you have to learn on top of what you're already doing. Um, so yeah. Scrivener is nice because like that takes the, all of that um, out of the equation, right? Sure. But then again, it, it doesn't create pretty PDFs, so maybe yeah. you need both. So, so one thing I've been doing lately, if if you have a Mac, um, you can put it into Pages, mm -hmm. and Pages is actually much better on both. So it's better for um, PDFs than Word. Yeah. And it's better for EPUB export than Word. Way, mm -hmm. way more simple. Mm -hmm. um, even then, sometimes I'll have to take it into something like Sigil, which is an EPUB editor yeah. um, that I definitely recommend if you're working with eBooks. Mm -hmm. um, and you can get Sigil for free. Um, another valuable tool. Um, but Sigil allows you to directly edit your EPUB mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, with, when, when Pages or when Word or even when uh, 
uh, Scrivener, don't format something exactly like I want it. I'll go into Sigil and I'll fix things. And um, yeah, I, I, I think that's an important part. I don't think I've ever published or edited a, a, a EPUB book without using Sigil um, for some kind of final cleaning up. Right. It's funny you mentioned that. I, I even have uh, developer friends who write their books in Sigil just to oh, make the whole process easier. I don't know if that's for me, but <laughs> it's one way to do it because it is yeah. a, like it, whatever formatting you put in there is exactly what you're going to get out the other exactly. side. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's weird. I mean, sometimes you can export a file two different times and it'll come out two different ways and you're doing the same things. And that's true whether you're using Word or Scrivener, less so with pages, but still. Right. Um, you know, these, the exporting is just, it does weird stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. So. It almost feels like the technology is not quite there yet. You know, all these things, yeah. they do it and they get the job done, but do they do it well? I don't know. That's a question of uh, <laughs> a relative, yeah. relative answers, right? Right. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Cool. So what about um, collaborative writing projects? Have you ever used Scrivener for a collaborative project? I haven't. Um, I, I know you can. Mm -hmm. um, and I've played a little bit with that, but I haven't collaborated on it at all. Mm -hmm. So you, um, for your ghostwriting projects, I would call those like collaborative, right? Right. And you use Microsoft Word typically? Yeah, for that kind of thing, I'll, I'll be, uh, I use Word. Mm -hmm. um, once it gets to a point of collaboration, uh, I pretty much focus on Word. Okay. Are there any other areas where Scrivener falls short for your writing process, maybe that we haven't covered? Um, I mean, I do all my blog writing on, uh, on actually on WordPress directly, um, so it'd be kind of interesting to have an, a, you know, a word processor that could cover all these different areas, mm, mm -hmm. uh, not yeah. just not just book, you know, editing, but um, or book making, book writing, yeah. but blogging too. So you write so. directly in the um, WYSIWYG editor on WordPress, like so. You always need an internet connection to do that. Yeah, if I don't have one, I will sometimes like compose on Evernote. Mm -hmm. um, but I do so much research as I'm blogging. Right. Uh, you almost always need the internet anyways. Yeah. I downloaded a new, um, the, it's, it's one of these Zen writer tools, the, the minimalist writing tools that have come out. Sure. It's called Typed, and it allows you to write in Markdown and then export that to HTML. Now okay. this this isn't something you know. It's not like the all-in-one tool that everybody wants, but uh, it's great for blogging because you can write in Markdown, export to HTML, and then you just copy paste it into the into WordPress, yeah. and it's formatted beautifully. That's cool. Yeah, I haven't mastered Markdown yet, so that wouldn't help me very much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's just you know it's it's the next new thing, thing, right? Right. Um, <clears throat> cool. So we mentioned a couple other tools. Um, are there any other digital or analog writing tools that are intrinsic to your process? Um, yeah, I use I use Evernote for capturing research. Mm -hmm. um, so I love the Clipper tool, both from my iPhone and from uh, from my browser. So I regularly clip things into a notebook specifically for that project. Um, which helps keeps keep everything in the same place, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I think I think that's about it. I mean, once once you get to um, so so I'd say Evernote and then Scrivener, kind of Evernote for research, Scrivener for kind of composing and capturing my own writing and then word at some point for editing and then you know exporting to epub using you know word or scrivener or 
pages and then uh, sigil to kind of clean up everything. Yeah. Um, that's about it. I mean, I, I've done some, some work with InDesign. So when you're, when you're putting a book in print format, mm -hmm. um, you, you kind of have to use InDesign. Mm -hmm. um, you can do that kind of in Word. You can kind of do that in Pages. You can't really do that in Scrivener. Um, so, uh, you know, I've done it myself and, and hired people to do the interior files on InDesign. Um, so that's another kind of tool, but that takes, you know, so much more expertise that it's, uh, it, it, it was intimidating to learn that the first time. Absolutely. It's a very complex program. Yeah. So what is the process like between the research and the composition? How do you get your notes from Evernote into Scrivener? Do you like import them into Scrivener or do you just reference them side by side? Yeah, I just reference them or copy and paste when I need them. Mm -hmm. and this um, a lot of time I use it for bookmarks. So not even necessarily right. whole pages, but bookmarks to pages or selections, you mm -hmm. know, quotes or something that I'll copy and paste. Yeah. And that was the clipper tool you mentioned, so you can basically highlight stuff on your phone or on the browser, and it saves that clip, whatever you highlighted, into Evernote, and then you have a whole bunch exactly. of research. That's yeah, good. exactly. It must save you a lot of time, right? You can do it on the go. You don't have to type yeah. you know, something out again. Yeah, and the worst is when you forget to save a link yeah. or you forget to you know, grab that page, and you know, then you come back to it a week or a month or a couple months later and you're mm -hmm. like, okay, I know I read this somewhere. Mm -hmm. I know I have the research, but I don't know where it is. Right. Um, so now what? <laughs> yeah, totally. I use a, a, an app called Pocket, which is a read -a later app to save all the articles and links, but it doesn't have that clipper feature, um, yeah. which is where, where Evernote really excels, I think. Um, yeah. And so if I am, I'm ever looking for like a piece of research, I'll go back and search pocket, but then I have to read through the article to find that quote I was looking for, you know? Gotcha. Um, and yeah. Ki Kindle also highlights stuff too. And you can go on to, uh, I think it's kindle.amazon.com and look at all the highlights from your books and copy paste those out too. Yeah. And that's helpful. Um, so we've kind of covered, you know, what we use Scrivener for and what the process is. Let's go a little bit beyond that now. Um, are there any future features that you would just love to see included in Scrivener? I mean, apart from the obvious track changes and maybe a little bit of a collaborative writing uh, feature. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think they're pretty resistant to formatting options yeah. at Scrivener. And, um, and I get that because it is, it can be a major distraction, um, but, but I find it's very difficult to get things to look like I want them to look. Mm -hmm. And often, you know, their styles, they have some styles and, and they kind of do weird things. And um, so, you know, that's kind of always uh, something I wrestle with. Mm -hmm. on Scrivener formatting things just like basic formatting is something I, I always wrestle with and then when you go to export something into EPUB or Word it comes out different as mm -hmm. well yeah you know and um, so yeah I mean I think Scrivener is great for what it is um, there's no other tool that is as great for what it is as Scrivener, for structuring your book, for organizing things, for managing large documents, even even documents like a, a book proposal, mm -hmm. or um, or a long article, mm -hmm. you know, um, yes. it's not just for books. Right. So, for for managing those large projects, it's it's perfect, um, but it's not perfect for everything. Yeah. And so, could it be perfect for everything? Maybe. But um, maybe you can't make it perfect without breaking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I guess you, you, you never know? really have that all-in-one tool, right? That's kind of like a, a fantasy yeah. wish list sort of thing. Sure, yeah. yeah um, so. 
So in recent years, I mentioned minimal, minimalist writing software like uh, Writeroom, IA Writer, and Typed earlier. Um, and, and all the new writing softwares that I see come out um, are, are very much like these minimalist ones, you know? And, and they're all modeled after the Microsoft Word, uh, linear, one page from top to bottom style. Um, but nobody seems to be coming out with a Scrivener competitor, something that's mm. structure based um, and focused on the ease of compiling to ebooks. Do you think that Scrivener will ever have any true competitors? Because right now they seem to be the only ones in the field. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. What do you think? I mean, I would hope that they uh, have some competition, personally. I think competition always makes yeah. them improve, but at the same time, I mean, it, it just seems like that's the right. only thing out there when it comes to, you know, structural writing and, and kind yeah. of a non-linear way of thinking, right? Like, I'm a big proponent sure. of uh, writing out of order. I, I almost never write a story or, or uh, an article or anything in order. Yeah. You know, like you said earlier, you know, it's, it's great when you're focused on capture because you can capture that moment and what you write down first might not be the beginning of a story. It might be the last scene or it might be just a moment in the middle or a line of dialogue and you don't know where it goes yet and you can figure that out later. But, um, I mean, I, I just, I don't think they have any other competitors right now. It's almost like they're alone out there and it's just this one writing software that wants to do things differently and everybody else is so stuck yeah. with this wall of text. Um, linear format. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's probably true. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, it would be interesting to see a competitor. Um, mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't switch because, or at least not for a long time, just because, you know, once you find a routine in a program, it's really difficult to change. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if you've, you've seen um, those articles about what George R. R. Martin uses to write it's like this old uh 1980 or 1990 uh almost like command line uh, <laughs> writing tool i think it's green text and black background and wow it's just really really old school uh, <laughs> and you know who can blame them because once you find a routine Right. And using a tool, um, changing is almost more difficult than uh, than learning some. Yeah, than, than doing it the way you have been doing it. Yeah, I think that fear of change is also what prevents a lot of people who are intimidated by Scrivener to switch over. You know. Sure. They're sure. like, oh, I'm so used to writing in Microsoft Word. I don't want to go learn this new software tool. I don't care how awesome it is. It's just work. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're both a form of procrastination. I mean, at some level, you just need to write. Right. Totally. You know, um, you don't need to be learning a new tool. Uh, but if a tool can help you go to the next level mm -hmm. with your editing, with your composing, with you know, then uh, then you're just living in fear. Right. You know? and and. Uh, you need to you you need to change, you know. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to decide whether it's procrastination or fear. <laughs> mm -hmm. Totally. Old resistance. You never want to give into it. Right. Yeah. So what about the future? I mean, where are we going to be in ten years? Is Scrivener the end game? I mean, technology is evolving so fast. I just wonder. You know, like Scrivener, a lot of people have been asking, for example, for a Scrivener mobile app so that they can, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. work on their iPad on the road or on their phone and then check back on the desktop sure. and have everything sync over there. But do you, sure. do you see, like, some other vast improvements that would meet the technology as it develops? Yeah. I mean, I think that's a good point. I think, you know, talking about competition, um, if... If Scrivener doesn't have kind of a platform when you, where you can sync over through multiple devices, mm -hmm. it won't be the writing tool of the future, yeah. you know? Because on multiple occasions, you know, I've wanted to, I've been working in Scrivener and wanted to go for a walk, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, writers, we sit along, we sit for a long, long periods of time and, uh, it's not good for our backs. It's not good for 
our focus, our energy levels. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have these great computers in our pockets now. Um, and it can be helpful to, to write while you walk. Mm -hmm. you know? um, so you can't really do that on Scribner. And so you, you, know, you put in an Evernote and then copy and paste it into Scrivener when you're done. But um, yeah, we do need that kind of syncing feature. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, maybe maybe Evernote will turn into the, the book writing tool of the future. <laughs> They've already got that syncing across devices nailed down. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Cool. Well, this has been uh, a lot of fun, Joe. Thanks for taking yeah. the time to join us. And uh, we'll talk soon. Thank you, Matt. That was great. All right. Bye for now. Yeah.